<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to OCR Unedited, where we highlight amazing coaches, athletes, and everyday people from the OCR, DACA, High Rocks, Trail communities for fun, unscripted, and unedited conversations. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Bruce Jackson. Bruce, how are you? I'm great. Well, I appreciate you having me on, for sure. Um, like we were saying before, it truly is a pleasure to have you on. I've been following you and man, have you had a great year in 2022? I congratulate you not only in DECA, but also High Rocks and, and OCR as well. Yeah. Uh, you had a really great year. I did. I did. I almost completed the tri the triple, the trifecta triple there, but I, I came up a little bit short in uh, DECA, but still proud of it. And 2023 years, a brand new year and you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, we have some new goals for 2023, but yes, I, I'll be back at it. Already back at it. Yeah, so <laughs> I've been following you, and truly, I want to say a huge shout out to you and your dedication and your drive, your commitment to not only OCR, but I, I think mostly uh, to DECA and High Rocks and how well you've done. Yeah. So congratulations um, to you, my friend. Uh, truly inspiring, and you know that also inspired me to get into it. Oh, really? There you go. Um, yeah. So, and like I was telling you, it was just a matter of, you know, a time uh, to be able to schedule you on, not only for, for me to learn about you personally, but for everybody else uh, to learn about who you are. And so um, truly glad that uh, you were, that you had some time to spare here to come on and uh, so we can get to know you. Yeah, much appreciated. So okay. let's get started now. Let me ask you the biggest question here is who is Bruce Jackson? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Ah, uh, well, you know, I'm just, I'm just another old guy, weekend <laughs> warrior. That's all I am. <laughs> um, I, I'm just somebody, I was, I was a late bloomer. Let's put it that way. You know, yeah. um, first and foremost, I'm a father. That's, that's yeah. what I, uh, that's how I, all of this got started to begin with, uh, doing this with my sons. Um, Back in 16, 17, 18, 19, yeah. uh, they were pretty much the reason it was our father-son thing that started this whole uh, thing from coming up. But um, yeah, I just stumbled upon Spartan back in 16. Just I was going to a gym with some guys and uh, they kept telling me, I got to go to this gym, got to go to this gym. I'm like, yeah, I get around to it. I'm, I'm working out at the Y, playing basketball with the old guys, you know, and you guys are doing crazy stuff. I don't want to do that. And uh, anyway, so I went to this gym and uh, they were like, you need to sign up for, you need to sign up for a Spartan. You need to do a Spartan. I'm like, ah, all right. I, like I, I am not a high school athlete. Like I played when I was younger, I played soccer, but I, I was a F up in high school. Like, and after I went through everything you could go through, I am not a straight and narrow person. So you know, I hadn't run more than like three miles in a row in my life till I was 38, 37, you know, so I didn't really like the running, but uh, <laughs> anyway, they, they were like, you got to sign up for the elite wave. You got to do the elite wave. And, you know, this is back before uh, we had age group. I'm like, get crazy. And yeah. Anyway, I signed up, obviously didn't do great, but I got done and I was like, that was that was fucking fun. <laughs> I want to do that again. And the first thing I thought was my oldest would love this. You know, at the time, I think he was, uh, oh God, uh, he was about 15, 16. So yep. just told him to get started. And uh, we started doing it, me and him. And then when my youngest came of age, he started doing the kids races. And then we were traveling all the time, all together. And it was great. I loved it. It was such a good time. A lot of, lot of times where we all, you know, my, my youngest would go, he had his group with the kids races and, you know, we'd all just go our separate ways. I mean, you know how the Spartan family yeah. is, everybody's got there, but it was just so awesome to travel and have that experience with them. You know, um, every three or four weekends, we're going somewhere to do yeah. a race. They were just as into it, if not more than I was. So it was, uh, it was super cool. So like I said, I mean, first and foremost, that's how this whole thing started. Yeah. Um, let me ask you. So, what's your age group now that you're racing in? I'm still. Uh, I, I think, think you and I yours. were in the same age group. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Forty, the mid mid late forties. What is that? Forty five <laughs> to forty nine. We, 49. I'm we not are 50. we are forty five, forty nine. That's me. Yep, I'm forty seven. So, I've always wondered if you and I have raced. 
I was thinking the same thing. When you reached out to me, I was like, I don't think I've ever raced him. But you're you're in Canada. I'm in Canada. Right? Yeah. So I've, how many I've US been... races have you done? I've done a few U.S. races. Um, I've seen Cole. I mean, Cole and I, we've always wanted to run together. Um, yeah. um, uh, there's Kevin, but Kevin is a little older than us. Um, but you and I, I don't know. I haven't really gone, um, you know, to check my past history, uh, in, you know, in Spartan to see if you and I have raced, but I don't think so. So typically I stay in the southeast. Okay. Um, I'll go for national series, bigger events. I'll go to West Virginia. I'll go to big bear. I'll go to Tahoe. Yeah. Um, okay. So those are the places that I've not hit. I, in 2022, oh, okay. I started off at, um, San Luis Obispo. Yeah. So I did the, so my fiance was there, but I didn't go with her. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I was there. I, you know, saw Cole and everybody else. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I don't think you and I have raced, and I do look forward, whether it be OCR or DECA or High Rocks, it, it'd be a great um, opportunity to to run uh, with you or yeah, against absolutely. you. Um, so tell me, what are some of your most memorable OCR races? Um, obviously, first podium, which would have been 2018, um, I think uh, – a couple of times the boys and I have all gotten first place. Um, uh, me, my son and my youngest all get first place in one race, like one day that's, that's happened like wow. three times. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Incredible. Um, this year, honestly, um, Oh, I don't know. I guess probably one of the first times I ever beat Cole. That was a good, that was a good remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, think I saw tired, the pick. So it really doesn't count. I think he failed spear too, but either way I beat him. <laughs> um, it is what it is. Uh, but probably the most memorable would have been the, um, the first Tahoe race that I did, which would have been uh, 2017. Um, they just introduced Twister. It was the last time. Well, one of the last times they did it. That wasn't the last time they did it in Tahoe, but it was, uh, you know, it was like 16 miles never done anything like that in my life um but i qualified the week before uh, i got they had there was when they were given the coins you know you had to get yeah, the coins remember. you're racing elite yeah i actually qualified with uh it's the first time i met scott scott knowles from i am a spark yes. podcast yeah. we both qualified the same day and at the time like called my my wife at the time and i was like i guess i'm going to tahoe next week <laughs> You know, and I was like, screw it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go check it out. I know I'm going to get my ass handed to me, but I want to do it. I'm, you know, so that was that was pretty cool going out there and doing that. Um, but I, I think the um, this year being the first year that I was really like, I'm setting some goals. I'm going to do this. I'm winning the age group series. Yeah, I don't care. Like, I think the this year, even though the boys weren't as involved, was pretty memorable just because this was the first time I really was adamant about. I mean, I always want to win, but I didn't really chase the series. You know, this year I was like, I'm I'm chasing it and I'm gonna win it. Good. So that, that was that was pretty awesome to do that. Oh, that's awesome. How do you find um training for OCR and training for high rocks? Oh, how do you how do you how do you train each one of them? Well, OK, so this year, one of the ways that I was able to do that and having the three goals I had for the year, which was winning High Rocks, winning Deca, winning the Spartan. The first things first, what I noticed about Spartan is I'm not a beast guy. I don't like the long distance stuff. I, I don't. And that's one of the reasons this year was so great for me because I was able to do three of the five and two of them were sprints and one of them was in my backyard. So, um, but I, I, I know that I am a one, like 45 minute to one hour guy. I can hang in shitty for a, that amount of time. And after that amount of time, um, I, I just start to crash down. Like, I just don't like these. I don't, I don't like them. Um, so this year, thank you for the sure tips. To go back to your question. Yeah. This year to my question, to go back to your question, I, I stayed in that zone. I stayed training for short races, 30 yeah. to an hour, you know, max heart rate, 
that's where you live after an hour it's too much 30 minutes not enough kind of thing i just lived in there and that's what you know with deca the longest race is 30 minutes you know um even in the super that we did for uh i think that was right at an hour high rocks is a little bit longer but this year i did it with joe rivera we okay. did we, we competed as a, a a team thing this is my first real year into it so um and again that was an hour so uh, and i i think that it really helped propel me because in the past you'd go from hey i'm training for a sprint and then next weekend i'm doing big bear you know, the beast. And then the weekend after that, we're in Fayetteville doing a, a short sprint. It's like, it's impossible to train correctly for that to, to win them all. You know what I mean? You have your outliers for sure. But for me, it's like, I need to be specific in my training and I need to keep it to what I know I can do. So I stayed, um, high intensity interval efforts, one hour or less. And that's how I was able to, and I will say, if you train for high rocks, DECA is not a problem. If you train for DECA, high rocks is a problem. Yeah. So you have to kind of go that route. Yeah. Now with OCR, uh, 2023, mm -hmm. fresh, brand new year. What are some of your goals? Honestly, for OCR, I, I, I think I'm going to fun run a lot of stuff this year. <laughs> um, my fiance, Sarah, she's, She's still, she loves it. You know, she's, she's all about it. So I'll be, I'll be traveling with her, but I'm not going to chase the series. Um, this year, oh, especially. But, <laughs> well, this year, you know, you got to do four and out of the five and like three of them are beasts. I'm like, that is not, I have some other goals. Um, high rocks is I'm, I'm all about that right now. Good. Um, but you know, I will say that I, I want win in the age group series. I want a season pass. So it's like, well, I got a race. <laughs> um, so, but stadiums, I think stadiums might be my, my next. That's uh, your bread goal. and butter then now? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I haven't done one yet, but I oh, think okay. this year, year that I think I go after, because that fits in my, what I like to do. You got know? you. Yeah. Uh, that, that fits into my high intensity interval. You know, they do all the things I like doing. And plus, you know, I haven't done one. They look pretty cool. So I think, I don't know if they have a series this year but I, i'm definitely going to do that'll probably be the majority of what i try to do this year stadiums really interesting i've never done a stadium but the way you described it right now i, I can see how that would fall into that umbrella you know with your training with uh, the that guy and the high rocks and so i can see you doing really well in that i can see you doing really well also in ocr with um you know um because you had a great year in 2022 in the past years but i really do hope to see you out in the field uh, this year and if not i mean are you going to uh by the way i mean we're gonna go out of topic here but yeah um high rocks houston are you going houston um i will which is that's okay so we're doing, 25th we're doing, of feb no because that's the same day as the jacksonville spartan race i know and it's the and that's my that's we live here um yeah. so yeah i'm not missing that race i i uh <sighs> i love that race <laughs> That's I'm the only High Rocks I'm not doing because I'll be in Dallas two weeks after at High Rocks. Okay. Yeah. No, and then it's... we're doing Chicago the week before with High Rocks. So, yeah. you know, we didn't do all three. Yeah. yeah I but know. I did have it. I didn't. Did they change the date to that? Yes, they or... did. It was first. No. First, it was January, which I was yeah. excited because then I planned. My plan was right. to go to Jacksonville. Finally, mm -hmm. I have the time to now do it because there's been years you know, talking with Cole and then talking with a number of other guys that they normally would go. Yeah. You know, they love Jacksonville. Jackson, and I've, and I've always wanted to start my season off at Jacksonville. Even being here in Canada, I wanted to start and I couldn't and I couldn't. You know, there was always something else that came up. And then this year, I was excited. I'm thinking, high rocks, boom, I get to do it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, there was a, 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 a date change on the day that, you know, on the week before that i was going to sign up for jacksonville and they changed it and it was like i know yeah so that's why i'm not and we actually leave the day after to go on vacation uh yeah. we're going on a ski trip so like yeah i'm not just i i initially was absolutely going to but it's okay we're just we're just crossing paths here yeah. eventually it will happen because i do plan on doing many more i mean it's... well i'll be at 
almost every other high rocks they have here this year so anywhere in the states i'll be there probably oh. except for the houston one okay so now with with ocr um so you're you're basically going to be doing it as a fun you know going into them for fun you're not going to be really racing that's well when i say fun run i mean n there's no pressure gotcha. but anybody that knows me i'm there <laughs> To, to make me exactly <laughs> when we say fun we don't yeah. mean fun no, no, no like i'll have fun after but i will play need to spoiler. work out trust yeah. me i will play spoiler <laughs> i love that um have you ever done any ocr races up in the northern states like well, Michigan, the greek, new york greek peak used to be my favorite race because that's my hometown okay. uh the greek peak spartan that's right um the last one they did was literally the the week COVID hit. Like I remember they were like, oh, we're gonna shut it down maybe, but and then they didn't have it last year. It doesn't look like it's on the docket this year. I don't know what happened, but that was and then I've done what's the other one in uh upstate New York? It's uh an old ski resort. I think it starts Tuxedo. I've done that one before too. Okay. Um yeah, but other than that, the furthest north would be West Virginia or Palmerton, I've done Palmerton. That's one of my bucket lists, West Virginia. Oh, that's my, that's by far my favorite venue. Yeah, and I a lot of people it. say that. Super cool venue, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, now let's let's switch over now to Deca High Rocks, where you you know you uh, the the sport itself is growing, like we were saying before, it's growing quickly rapidly throughout the world people are now starting to love it uh, i think one of the things that people why people are falling in love with it because it's kind of fitting the format of what a gym would would provide to their clients mm -hmm. you know you do a little bit of running a little cardio and strength work and and and, and, and these all, all these other variations and now um, and, and they can now put it together and then apply it to sports like DECA, uh, the many DECA uh, levels that they have, and then High Rocks. Yeah. And it's really also helping these gyms now be able to facilitate and, and be able to teach and, and provide this type of training to all these people. Yeah. Which really fits hand in hand, which is incredible. And it's growing. And here in Canada, I just started. Uh, so I did a couple uh, deca one as a team, uh, the four by four challenge, and I did uh, the singles uh, competition, and I loved it. Fell yeah. in love with it. So now, which one did you do? Uh, I did the uh, the strong, strong okay. deca strong. Loved it, loved okay. it. And then as I started to learn uh, more about myself and the training and what it requires and the different deca levels and the, you know, um, uh, I guess events that you could do. Along with High Rocks, I started to also research other athletes. Mm -hmm. This is where you come in because I followed you and okay. I've seen how well you've done. And so I've had to also manage and then kind of um, modify my training to fit these these events. And so that's why I'm so happy that you're here, that we get I get to talk to you and ask you all these questions. So how did you get involved with DECA? And High Rocks, and what is it about them that intrigue you? Well, DECA, um, we were, uh, well, first of all, I before I did Spartan, I started getting into CrossFit. And I had won a couple uh, scaled level competitions in South Florida. And uh, yeah, I was pretty into that when Spartan came about. Um, so I was already kind of, I like that type of training i like that high intensity interval training that's what i prefer to do that than 10 sets of 10 on the bench press you know what i mean I, yeah. that's just not my thing um so deca started and we were the second gym i think on the tour that Yan when yancey and uh jared had a van packed with <laughs> ski ergs and rams and a tank and they were driving around they started in florida and we were the second gym they came to to do a deca strong and uh, our gym, Get It Core Fitness, we got quite a few pretty ridiculous. We've all been doing DECA for a while, but um, it just fit us. And we all just, you know, it, I uh, I was like, yeah, this is, this is way more me. <laughs> um, 
it's just, I don't know. For me, it's just, I am, I'm not the fastest runner. I don't like running. (laughs) I do it. I hate it. I do it. And I do it every day. I got up this morning, 3 a.m. I did my yeah. run, did my intervals, whatever. Uh, but um, I am always been the person, like, when they got rid of the tire, I was pissed. This part. I'm like, that, this is the thing that separates me from yeah. the skinny runners. Like, I I need some strength stuff to slow yeah. you people down. <laughs> you know, no, I and get this, you. <laughs> even the scale more. And it was just so much more me and how we used to, that I was like, this is amazing. This is great. Yeah. Um, and so once we did that, I was absolutely hooked. And then we, we became one of the first or second affiliates um, the deck I had, and we started putting on events and um, yeah, I mean, a lot of my early success was probably more due to the fact that it was so new and a lot of um, our age group and others weren't, you know, a lot of people stay away from a while. Then you had the fact that they introduced it during COVID. So it was just like, you know, it was hard to do. It was hard to do anything, but of course, something new, everybody just wanted to go back to racing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we just, uh, our whole gym loved it. And, um, we just went from there and, um, I started making it more of a priority. Started seeing that I had some success there. I mean, maybe slightly more success than I was having at, obstacle course racing yeah. um i got to stay dry which was nice <laughs> um so yeah so that's kind of how it all started and then high rocks again just plays more into it because now you're adding even heavier stuff yeah. and longer um so now you're really taking the runners out of it like to a to a degree you still have to be a great runner but high rocks is less about um again it's more in that can you just hang in that uncomfortable misery for a little while versus yeah. um, even the fast runners are going to do good at DECA uh, in the DECA mile because it's not that heavy. It's really not that like, there's nothing in it. That's like, Oh my God, this is crazy. You know? But um, with DECA, I mean, there's still that separation because for example, DECA strong, you have 10 exercises that you have to do yeah. at a high intensity, really quick, you know, no stopping all the way from, from as soon as you start to the end. Foot on the but, gas. And, yeah. And so that training is very different mm-hmm. from what I've noticed with high rocks, because high rocks, at least the running gives you that time to breathe and recap before going into your next yeah. high intensity exercise. And so right. I feel like that OCR helps. I mean, for me, for my experience, I feel like OCR has helped me with that and with the training mm-hmm. that I've done before. But with DECA, it's a whole different training itself. Yeah. Because and it you're is. in misery, you, we, basically, from beginning. Right. To end. You have to, you know, every single time we get ready to start a DECA event, the first thing I'll look at the people next to me, I'm like, I don't want to do this. Because I know, <laughs> I know what I'm going to feel like in 10, 12 minutes. I'm going to feel like, kill me, you know? <laughs> but, we have gotten so analytical with it. Uh, I train with Ryan Corning, who's, you know, had the DECA strong record forever. He works out with me at my gym. And we are just like, I probably have 500 different DECA workouts. And, you know, we just are so like three seconds here, three seconds there, two seconds. Where can we save three more seconds? Where can we? And we just every year just continue to shave a little more, a little more, a little more off. And you learn how to be efficient. You learn where you can save energy. You learn where you can push it. Um, obviously that whole thing comes down to the assault bike, right? I mean, it's, you have to have some power. If you don't have some power behind you, you yeah. are going to die, you know? Um, yeah, because, go ahead. you know, you mentioned that important thing right there and that the assault bike to a lot of people, they think that that is easy when you're going at a high intensity, you're going all out. The assault bike to me, when I did the, um, my first Deca strong, it sucked the energy out of me. Mm-hmm. And it, I did what, not that's think where that, that race starts. I don't care if it's the strong, the mile, the, the fit, your race doesn't begin until there. Cause there is your come to Jesus. Are you done <laughs> or are you, can you make it? You know, it's no, it's true. <laughs> I think I saw him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're on your own, son. <laughs> yeah. I have some pretty horrible assault bike workouts that we do. Just, I just, oh God, I think I hate, I definitely hate that worse than running. 
let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, so here's a question for you. How okay, so what is your nutrition like when you're training for a um for a deca strong? A deca strong, it's it's you know, I mean, obviously I try to limit my sugar um intake, but I, you know, I don't really, I'm not too crazy that the strong is so short, you know. Um you almost don't even have time to sweat. It's over with before you even start really, you know. So with that, I don't think you need, you don't need to carb load for that. You don't need to, you definitely need to have a lot of water. You know, I say leading up to a deca strong, especially like you want to limit the sugar. You want to, you know, you want to, you want to feel kind of light, but at the same time, um, you know, I just don't think it's long enough to really require like a nutritional you know, once you get more into like the mile, the fit, you know, into the high rock stuff, I think you can, you know, the, the nutrition becomes a little more, but honestly, um, the strong is, I don't, I don't see it as anything that I don't even know if I, I mean, take a pre-workout other than a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and now, now, I mean, uh, what's I your nutrition like, pre- how, what's your nutrition like for high rocks? High rocks is different. Um, of course. I mean, I struggle with, and I'm learning. I mean, I'm new to high rocks. I want to, that's like, uh, that's what I need to know. Um, I'm still playing with it. Um, it's such a long event. You absolutely need to be carb loaded, but at the same time, it's, you have to toe that line between, um, I, I think strength training for that with the, excess in protein also the excess in in carbs is going to be most effective there um and then you know so for me it's again about feeling light but in that event you can't be light you know what i mean yeah because that sled that 400 something pound sled will will make you feel light if you're too light so uh i think i i overdid it the the last event i did I don't know what the hell I was thinking, but again, I'm just experimenting. And I went in, I'm going to do this like dirty bulk thing. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to put on like eight, 10 pounds of just shitty weight thinking that that was going to, I'm so nerved up about this sled, you know, when I decided to do my first pro one and I was so nerved up about it and it just, it wasn't as big a deal as I thought it was going to be. But the fact that I had kind of put on this excess weight really screwed me in the second part of the, and I don't think I needed it. And I really was just so concerned with that stupid sled that I, I, it was dumb, but again, I'm learning, you know, I'm kind of learning as I'm, as I'm going here. And I think with nutrition, especially you really have to play with a lot of stuff. I mean, you know, if you've ever done an ultra or anything like that, which yeah. I, I think you've done yeah. you, your weeks before leading up to it, that's when you're playing with, what can my, what's my stomach going to be okay with? What works? What doesn't I like this? I don't like that. Like, you know, I think the same thing applies there and I'm still trying to figure it out. I think that gotcha. finding that weight for me with the, the proper mass proper, gotcha. I say proper, like actual muscle building mass and not just, I'm going to eat cheesecake for three weeks and put weight up. You, you know, know, with, with Becca, I kind of have a good idea on how to train. Yeah. Um, what would be your suggestion or advice or what would you recommend me or anyone coming into the sport? Um, I mean, high rocks is going to be new to me coming in on, to Houston. So what would you recommend for me to do or train for it? I think lots of high interval stuff with body weight is super important. I don't, I do shit tons of pushups and pull-ups only. It's pretty rare. You'll see me with you know, like I said, doing bench press, doing curls. I mean, I will lift heavy with my legs, um, but there's that. And there's the three machines, the ski, the row and the bike. Yeah. Get a in on those. If you can get efficient on those, especially the skier, because the skier sits right in the middle of that event. And is probably to me, the easiest one in terms of what it takes for me, you know, physiologically, it doesn't wreck me like the other two. I, for some reason, the rower wrecks me, but Got you. Uh, those having those three and becoming efficient, you know, training on the same way that you would train uh, at the track on those yeah. machines, I think is huge because that's where you start shaving massive amounts of time. Um, Got you. The rest of it. Yeah. is just. So 
Okay, so let's use the skier as an example. At what speed or rate would you do you train on for the skier? Well, I mean, I fluctuate between. If I'm trying to do, if I'm going all out, I'm trying to hit about a 140, 140, uh, or uh, I'm sorry, um, minute 40 per 500. Okay. Um, now, during the DECA events, I try to keep, I try to stay in that 155 to two range because it's almost like a break for me. However, I have been, I've re, I've re assessed that whole situation. And now I'm thinking I want to go into the ski a little bit harder, but, um, so for the rower, I'm trying to hold about a 145 for the ski. I'm trying to hold about a 150. And then for the bike per, per 500. Yes. Got you. Right. Um, and learn, you know, watch some videos, learn how to do it correctly. Cause you know, like with the rower, for example, the rower is just a seated deadlift. If you learn how to deadlift correctly, you can pretty much be pretty efficient on the rower without too much damage. Um, the skier too, you've seen, I've seen all kinds of crazy methods of people doing it and you really have to, you know, send the hips back, get the core more involved. Um, you see a lot of people like squatting down and you'll just wreck your legs. Um, if that's the case. Uh, so, so for example, when you're talking about that, are you saying that whenever you, when you're pulling down on the skier, if you squat too much and you move and you're coming down, that's, that's, that's not a, a good technique because that will it, tire your legs out. Right. If you're in a full squat, if your your butt's getting that low, you're, you're not doing it correctly. You need to, the, the hips need to go back um, as they would in like a stiff leg deadlift a little bit more, you will get some leg bend. Of course, you're going to need that. Cause you, you almost want to let your legs almost give out for a sec, which helps the, of course the, the pulls. Um, but not to the point where you're coming down to a seated position. No, no, because you will, then you're going to just jack your legs up and that's not what you want to do there. You want to feel it in your core first gotcha. and then, you know, lats, triceps, and a little bit in the backside of your, your posterior chain and your legs. But if you're feeling it all in your legs, that's not good. <laughs> Those are really great tips because I see, and I, when I started training for it, I was doing that. And then somebody corrected my technique mm -hmm. and then I felt a lot different. And yeah. then I, as I did more, I got stronger and I, and I understand exactly what you're saying, but there's a lot yeah. of people that don't understand the technique. So going into something like this, you're going to tire yourself out. Yeah. And I see it all the time. I see guys from our, you know, from Spartan and everything. I see them getting into it. And, you know, I, I, I'm a personal trainer. So my first instinct, anytime I see somebody, even if it's somebody I compete against, I'm not going to be like, well, I'm just going to let him like, I'll tell you like, Hey, this is fix this, fix this. Cause I, I want to see people succeed, but I see it all the time. And we host deck events all the time. And I'm just like, I'll see, guys that should do a lot better that are just wreck themselves from inefficiency. And I'm like, of all the, with DECA, you have to learn how to be efficient on every one of those stations. That's the whole thing as a fit that the best people are efficient at each and every station all the way down the line. Like everything they do is, is very calculated I mean, and uh, meticulous. So learning that stuff will save so much. You know, uh, even on the bike, like you see the same thing on the bike. You get people when their head starts to fall and they start to get like this, uh -uh. just like running. Yeah. Pick your chest up, get the air in the lungs as much as it sucks. It sucks whether your head's up or you, whether your head's down, what's the difference? Keep your head so, up. <laughs> let me ask you regarding the, the bike. Yeah. And this is something, I mean, I'm starting to understand the technique behind it. And so I do it in small intervals and then build from that. Uh, because there, there's a certain time that I want to be able to accomplish that and get out and still yep. maintain energy to my next one. Hmm. What is your breathing technique to the assault bike? Do okay, you have so, one or is there even one? <laughs> so I don't think there is one. I mean, I, you just have to become, it's like doing interval work on, on a track. You know, it's like, for me, I love, I hate 800s. It's, for me, the bike is like an 800. I hate it. Can't stand it. So I get on it 
and I know that I can maintain probably about 600 watts, six, 700 watts for a good 30 seconds without, with minimal damage. So I try to, the first thing, don't look at the damn thing because <laughs> that'll, that'll ruin your life, right? You want to go, Ryan and I kind of do the same thing. We get on it and we just go, we get in our pace and we just kind of go like, I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Try to hold that wattage. And then when you start to feel that going, then look, right? At that point, the biggest thing people forget is you got your arms and your legs, man, use it all, you know, push when you got to push, pull, get your upper body more involved because that is a, that is strictly a power machine. The people with the most mass behind them are going to be on and off that thing much quicker than the skinnier guy, like smaller guys. It's just how it is. That's just what it is. Yeah. Um, so you know, I've, I've being from a CrossFit background, I've been doing this salt bike for 12 years. As long as that thing's been out, I've been on it. So <laughs> I know it sucked. I knew it sucked when they brought it in. <laughs> um, so, yeah. you know, for me and, and, you know, some of the stuff I do, like, for example, like there's workouts you can do on it. Um, one of the ones I do for the deck a mile, which is the most horrible workout I've ever come up with, but I'm trying to hold about a 40 seconds per lap on my deck a mile. That keeps me at my, where I, where I want to be. That's an average, right? Your first one's going to be fastest. The one after the bike, not going to be fast, but I came up with this workout where you have two minutes, two minutes. And I set a bike up next to the treadmill. I have the treadmill going exactly that 40 second per 10th of a mile that I want to go. And I got two minutes to do 25 cal and finish that, that 10th of a mile. And then you have a two minute rest. How many, how many rounds can you get before you die? I think I've, I've hit like five. The goal is to hit 10. I think if I can hit 10 rounds in a row and in that two minute mark, I, I don't, I think I'm gonna be tough to beat in that, <laughs> but it is horrible. And I'll do that workout about twice a week for about three, four weeks leading up to the deck a mile. Um, wow. And honestly, it makes it, not as bad when you get there because you, you know any kind of workout with yourself bike sucks but when you get there and you know all right it's only 25 just get it over with and then you know running afterwards is horrible but like the deck is strong where you don't have to run it's a little bit easier because you can just get off and just start moving that ball right <laughs>